How can you find the, the, the champion? What do you look for? It's the technique, it's the mentality that you said a lot. How to spot that? Well, I think everything is important to be a very good tennis player, but I think the difference between the champions and the other people, it's here. It's nowhere else. Uh, I always say you win a Grand Slam with your mind and you don't win it with your tennis. The tennis is following your mind. I think to win majors, you need to be special. You need to think like a champion. You need to, and you, th you act like you think. So I spot their mentality. You know, I always say that the only way to know the people is to see them in extreme situations because, you know, we can talk for two hours, we don't know each other really. Okay. But when you'll be in trouble, I will know more about you. Same about me when I'll be in trouble. Sure. And I'm, when you are very successful also, that's also how you see the behaviors. And uh, So I test the players in many different situations to know who they are. Great. And of course I discuss with them <laughs> and I always say that also. My job is not to listen to what they say, but it's to hear what they think, which is different. Okay. And to hear what people think, you need not only to, to listen, you have to listen, it starts with that, of course, but they give you a lot of other information throughout the language they use, the body language, um, the attitudes, Again, seeing them in many situations, you have a million of information that you get. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, it's something that I developed when I was young because I couldn't connect with people. And when you can't connect with people, you need to find situ solutions to stay alive because we are social people. So we need to socialize. Sure. So I, spend my, I was spending my days looking at people, look at, looking at their interactions and trying to put my sh myself in their shoes and trying to feel what they were feeling. And I developed this ability to, nothing magic, <laughs> but to pay attention to a lot of details to get to, to feel them, you know, to feel what they were feeling. So, so I get to know them, uh, and then I can say who has more or less potential, first to be a tennis player, but second to be a champion, which is again different. Just to say it's even more mental than that, even a champion, the mental preparation of the match will let them play good enough to win, but also to lose potentially, or a different level. And if you look at, I don't know if you saw the final between Medvedev and, and Djokovic, the last US Open, Medvedev was able to play the best match of his life. And this is because when he entered the court, he had this. And I give you one more, one last. One year, Novak destroyed Rafa in Australian Open final, but l incredible the way he destroyed him. And I was there, and I was, I was just, you know, they entered these courts through this little corridor, and I was just there. Rafa was uh, in front of me, jumping, like he does always before entering the court, like these high jumps, right, a lot of energy. And Novak was uh, in, the, in the fitness, he was warming up. The door of the fitness opens, and Novak goes out like this. Wow. And I thought, I could see his eyes and his body language, and I remember I was with someone, I don't know who, but I said to this someone, oh my God, he's going to kill him. <laughs> it was obvious. Mentally, he was in a mindset, in that mindset, and he made it. So again, here. Mindset.